Alright guys, welcome back to part two of my puffin tutorial. So we have got this far and we are aiming to finish the rest in the second half of this tutorial. It may need three parts, I'm not sure yet. Um, but let's get straight back into the chest. Um, here we go. This is, we're back with our pan pastels, we've got the black and I'm just starting to implement um, or try and darken this part of his chest. Again, I'm not too focused on being super neat when I'm just trying to deepen the value in here. We might like to come in with our black pencil and again just start to fill in that tooth a little bit. There's not much detail in this chest part so I'm not worried about just a lie laying the pigment down. Oh, in with my finger again. I've got to stop doing this. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. What do we want? I want my blackest black pencil. <clears throat> and then we can really start to make it dark. So I'm just working around trying to fill in all the gaps, really deepen those values in this black fur. And if you need to just do some little strokes to replicate that the feather is crossing over the black, that's fine. with my white pencil and I'm going to come back over to this left side of his little chest area and start to work that in with a bit more detail. can kind of see although this area is like mainly just um, like there's not a lot of detail in it, I can kind of see that the fur is like kind of going on like a horizontal motion and then swoops down. And then we can see that there is a little bit of a browny colour underneath in this part of the wing. Getting our blending stump, we can blend that out a little bit. Come back in with our white. Redefine some areas. Come back in again, clean our blending stump try and buff out, give the illusion of depth of field, again, a bit more white, come back in again, clean the blending stump, you just have to keep back and forth layering and doing that over and over and over again. It can be a bit of a pain sometimes but it definitely does help. Um, this is not the best or easiest image to do this on. Taking a little bit of my warmer grey 
and I'm just adding that in in this inner almost armpit area of him and we can start to work down um, with little like C's very very wide half moon shapes I might actually grab, ooh, I might grab a little bit of the raw umber tint with my pan pastel, just dipping on my little brush and I'm going to slowly start to lay a little bit of a base trying to follow his feather direction. The nice thing about these pan pastels is that they um, do give a very soft fur look or like they're quite nice for feathers. And working our way around. And then they kind of change direction again. Oh, we definitely need to erase some of these lines. They're going to poke through the pigment way too much, so I'll just try and get rid of those. back in with my pan pastels and again just slowly working around it's much more of a gray tone through the front of this chest I don't want to do too much because then I will not be able to, like I'll be over the top of my work and smudging it with my hand. We might zoom back out. I think this would be a good time because we're kind of getting to that area. <sighs> okay, so we've zoomed out a little bit now. I'm going to grab my French grey 10% or so any kind of like, again, a warmish sort of grey. This is warm but light, so I'm just going to start to try and map in some of these chest feathers on this little guy. Again, not to worry because this outer edge of him is very, um, like... There's a lot of depth of field, so he's he, he's not super in detail. Is basically what I want to say. I am. This is a great example of me smudging my hand all over my artwork, which is not what I want to be doing. Just not taking care. <laughs> I do want to maybe just touch up this. Part where his body meets the background If the lighting's changed, it's because I took a break last night and I didn't come back. <laughs> I didn't come back to it, so we're back on it this morning. Um, <clears throat> so we're just coming back in with the pan pastels, just laying a nice base. And you'll notice that I'm just adding in strokes kind of resemblant to or resembling um, the feathers 
um, rather than just whacking down a whole bunch of colour. <clears throat> I'm a little bit wheezy today too guys, so sorry about that. Um, it's not ideal. Let's take our uh, <coughs> Stabilo Carbothello 784, so our warm grey. And we're just going to start to map in. So just along here, it kind of, the feathers, there's a, a bit of a shading through the feathers as it comes down towards the leg. So I'm just going to implement that by doing some light, gentle, sort of half moon strokes on an angle down towards those feet. I'm going to take my blending stamp and I'm just going to lightly tap and drag that pigment out. And I'm going to come back in with my bright white, so the uh, Azurite, I think it is, Azurite White by Karen Dash. <clears throat> and I'm going to start to pop in some um, more highlighted feathers. So we're going to do that on the um, top half of where we've just applied that shadow. And then underneath, it's quite bright as well, so... I'm just going to start to pop those in. Again, I'm not trying to fill the whole space. I'm sort of doing some strokes and then skipping a little bit of a gap. <clears throat> and coming up over the top here. And I can see again that the fur is kind of going this way, um, sort of on a downward angle to this bottom left hand corner. I might actually take my <clears throat> lac pencil by Ca uh, by Carbothello or by the Stabilo, and I'm just gonna start to tidy up this little edge a little bit, um, so we can see that there's a few little tiny tiny hairs crossing over, but it's got a bit muddy where I've been applying the white. So I'm just gonna touch that up with my black. So I'm working from the black out into the white in tiny little strokes. And you can see I've angled my pencil up to try and get a nice, sharp, clean, thin line as I do that. And then you can, once you've kind of marked those spots in, you can go back in with your circular motions and just tidy up if the white has crossed over. So I'm not going to do that where I haven't fixed up the like this part of his chest yet because then I'm going to start to add too much pigment into this area and it'll be really hard for me to correct. <clears throat> We might come back in with a bit more of our warm grey. Oh, my sorry, my head just hair just got caught on the camera. <laughs> and I'm just gonna really, really lightly add in a few sparse, um, like shadows through this white. Just a couple, and I'm being super, super gentle. And you'll see that I've got my pencil on about a 45 degree angle. And the reason why is because I want to have more of a, a broad application with my pastel um, and, and not so much defined detail. Boom. He starts to get very shadowy around here. So let's uh, actually, I'm going to take the same brown. Just up here I notice there in his little neck there's a little bit of um, 
like a lighter pigment poking through so I'm just going to pop in a few strokes to emulate that and then it kind of works its way down <clears throat> almost looks a little bit like it's in a fanning motion and I'm just being really light-handed like it's almost not visible and it will only be as we get right towards where the black meets the white that we add a bit more um, pigment in there and then I can switch it up for like a light grey so these 230 and start to apply that um, with a bit more opacity and then there's a tiny little one around here a little curve and then you can go in and highlight a few of those areas if you want to remember if you do it too much like I just did just grab that blending stump and tap over the top of it you don't need to rub it around just tap over the top and it will help reduce that <coughs> brightness okay so I'm gonna come back in with some white I might switch over to the Faber Castell Pit Pastel the 101 just around here just because the leads a little bit easier to get a sharper point um, there's no need to switch whites while you're working it's just a little bit easier for me um, right this second so if you only got one white pencil just work with that that's totally fine okay I'm actually gonna switch back to the Karen Dash um, Azurite Azurite white and start to lay that in you can see so this is the issue I sometimes have with pan pastels I don't know if you can see it very well but it's um, can sometimes appear a little bit grainy just because the paper can only take so much pigment so um, sometimes when I, I lay pan pastels it kind of eats up a lot of that pigment and I think that's what's happened where I've laid my base Okay, I just adjusted the lighting because I didn't realise that I'd switched my camera to uh, automatic rather than manual, um, which I don't like doing because it means what happens is like when I move my hand up in the picture, it will automatically adjust the lighting and it overexposes and I, I don't like that. So I prefer to just set my settings to be <coughs> manual and then um, I adjust them throughout the day as the light changes outside and affects in here so just as I'm working through this chest I'm gonna to start to shorten the length of my um, feather strokes because they're quite short and then I'm gonna to start to really fan them or curve them around his body <clears throat> around here I'm just looking at my reference photo and I constantly want to keep cross-checking to make sure that I'm not going rogue And if you need to, again, just clean off your blending stump and then touch and lightly drag that pigment. Always just try and avoid that black area because it's going to muddy up this nice white that we've just applied. And going back over popping in a few extra highlights just building my layers up as I travel along it's got a nice little curve just under this area sort of like one third of the way down on one yeah about one third of the way down um, and it kind of again goes in that like fanning motion so like a half crescent so we want to be mindful of that when we're applying our pigment so I'm going to start to lay my white down and then come back in with my darker colors um, and like my warm gray and stuff like that to add a bit more depth in the feathers so I might lay my white and then I'm going to take a clean blending stump and just um, 
blend that white pigment in a little bit. And then I'll come back again. And just keep building and building the layers up. So I'll grab my warm grey, <coughs> which is the 704, and I'm going to start to, in between, pop in a few little strokes. So I'm not doing it the whole way, and again I like pop in a line and I kind of miss a gap, and then I might do a few together and then miss a gap. I'm just trying to give the appearance of layers and shadow. And there's no when you're use when you're doing white, I find when you're using greys and, and whites and things like that, <clears throat> there is, you know, sometimes I lay the light pigment first, sometimes I lay the dark pigment first. Like I'll keep I kind of keep changing the way I do those sorts of things. Um, but I make sure I just keep going over it and over it and applying and layering. Um, to get the look that I want. So I've just switched back to my white and I'm starting to <clears throat> work my way down the chest a little bit. And might come in with my blending stump and just lightly touch and drag that pigment out and soften it. These chest feathers are very soft looking. They're not coarse. So I want to try and implement that. And I'm actually going to grab my black <clears throat> by Carbothello and just start to, again, as I've worked in this little area here, I'm just going to start to um, fix up the black transitioning to, into the white. So I'm creating little tiny, tiny little um, sharp lines. And then, because it can get a bit muddy, I just go in with my black in circular motions and just make sure that I'm getting rid of any of that white that might be sort of poking through in the black that I don't really want there. Now if you want to, we can actually take our blending stump and just buff this outer line kind of together with the background. Again, just to demonstrate that there's a bit of depth of field rather than being like, oh, he's... Because he, he kind of really does blur in a little bit with his surroundings on this side. Um, I can see a little poking out of like a bright yellowy colour. So I might take <clears throat> I might take my Carbothello 105, which is a very pale yellow, and just here I'm gonna start to pop in a little bit of yellow. It kind of it's almost like a little ray coming out next to him. It's so faint, it's almost probably not picking up on camera. It's pulling a lot of the pastel out of the paper already. And then I might take my, hmm, I might take this little guy, so the 726 I think it is. He's like the bluish base grey from Carbothello and I can start to, there's a few little like in the background blurred out grey sections. Um, so I'm really, really, really gently applying pigment and then I'm, excuse me, going to come in with a blending stump. So there's, they're almost like a little arches and gaps. It's obviously supposed to be the rocks in the background. But I'm going to take a clean blending stump and I am just going to really, really lightly in circular motions, hardly touching the paper, start to blend that in with its background pigment. And then we can work on um, adding in the darker areas. So I've done that. I'm going to come back in with that same colour. And then I'm going to start to 
add in a bit more definition in certain areas. Again, still working really lightly um, because I um, it is a super dark pigment in comparison to the background and I don't want to lay too much of it. There's almost actually like a little bit of very fine grey coming up here. I'm applying in like little circle motions. Very, very light. Almost not touching, I promise. And just... So where I've done all those circles and then kind of buff them out, I'm only going to apply a little bit of pigment, like a line or a dash. I don't want to fill the whole thing. And then I'm going to take my blending stump again, very lightly. Circular motions. And just kind of touch and buff that into the background. Make it blend in a little bit more. Maybe not so much right in the centre. And this poor little blending stump, he's like bending in half. He's all taped up. I just can't let him go. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working. And I need to come up here and just really buff in this. Um, background one that I've added because otherwise he's going to look ridiculous. So it's not, it's just very subtle. I don't want really um, punchy bits of grey that look super defined. I'm just adding in that very blurred out tiny bit of shade that you can see that something's going on in the background but it's not actually um, you know really defined so I'm going to take my white as well and I'm going to start to add in a few little circles in between some of these and indicate that there's like maybe some areas of the rock that are catching some light again come in with that blending stump and really really lightly just the edges, blend the edges of that white. I don't want to go over the whole thing. Touch and drag if you need, a little buffing circles. If you want, I might take actually that yellow is really not showing up that much I'm going to take the light flesh 5% and just pop that in where that I had that little yellow beam that I talked about and the back the good thing is is like the background is something that you can completely play with you might not you might just want to do a single color like you might not necessarily want to do uh, you, don't, you know, you might not want to actually replicate what I see in the background or what I'm doing in the background. So this is where I'm just going to take, I'm going to keep switching between my whites and things like that and just touching up where I feel like I need to. <laughs> Lots of loose pastel dust going on. I've just washed my hair. I have to be careful because I keep flicking water everywhere. Um, I'm flicking it on my paper and on my glass easel. Okay. All right. Uh, I might take my my eraser and just start to blend out or erase this line that's poking through here because. all way too bright and it's going to poke through the pigment and I don't want that you do have to be careful with these erasers that because you get close to the metal that um, the metal doesn't scratch the paper. It's happened to me once on a commission and it's almost impossible to hide that. Um, yeah, it's literally, it's 
Oh, nightmare. Absolute nightmare. All right, I'm going to jump around a little bit. And I'm going to come up to this side. So I'm going to take a black. And I'm going to start to just really lightly in circles lay my base. So I'm not being too worried. I just want to be careful around this shoulder as it transitions into the background. I don't want to be messy around there. My little circles. And then I can take a blending stump and I can blend that base pigment into the paper and just give me a foundation to work on. <sighs> and I'm going to come back in again, lay another layer. And grab that blending stump and just slowly start to push that pigment in again. Again, being careful around that upper shoulder. I'm going to try not to use my fingers today. I don't know what that was about yesterday. I've, I never, ever, 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 ever use my fingers to, on my artwork. <sighs> okay. Now we can actually see that in our black there's quite a lot of blue. So I'm going to take my, um, I want, I might take the Payne's Grey, I think it is, or um, Payne's Grey or Greyish Black. No, I'm going to take the Payne's Grey, 50% by Karen Dash, and then I'm going to start to, is that dark enough? Um, yeah, that'll do. Map in some little areas of the blue so it kind of transitions down the side of his neck here and comes in and then again only about oh, two thirds of the way down and then it has a few little areas jutting off here so I'm just being mindful to keep looking at my reference photo and seeing that there's bright bright areas of blue and then there's areas where it's actually um, quite black so we'll just keep layering not being too precise so I can come back in with my black and start to now really lay that pigment in <clears throat> so again just cross-checking my reference photo We're going to come back in in a minute with our blackest black. So I can see right along this upper shoulder it's quite black. And then I'll just try and transition that down into the blue a little bit. And then it's very, very thin line across the shoulder. <clears throat> and then just in this inner corner it comes up. It's very dark. And then there's a little bit of darkness in between here. And then quite dark as the white meets the black again. Remember, don't worry if it's not perfect straight away. We'll just keep working on it. I might take a bit of actual... Oh, it's probably a bit light. Let's go in with something like this, the 430, so it's quite a bright blue. And we're going to define along this little line here with some side strokes. And then again, just coming up on that neck really lightly. I'm going to take my 
create a color black which is my blackest black and just go in and border that on the inner portion and then I've made that line too long so I'm just going to take it away and then here I'm going to start to come in with my blackest black and do a little line up in between that V and then work it out this way. Now, I'm not going to have my blackest black too much with me for the second, so we'll go back to our Payne's Grey. I'm going to add a couple of little lines just up here in between the white. And I am actually going to grab my grey before I forget to do this. Oh, it's the Pit Pastel 230 that we've done on all along here. And I'm going to, because I can actually see, and I haven't marked it in, but this white curves very, very thin, like a tiny thin line up behind his little head. So I'm just going to try and implement that. So I've turned my pencil all the way up to a sharp point, and then I'm just wrapping that around. I just go in where you need to and touch up any areas. I've made that very muddy. Okay, so let's come back in with the 430, so that nice bright blue. And just along this upper wing, it is very pigmented and bright, so well, not very, but it's more so than the rest of the blue. So I'm just going to follow along that on the inside of that black outer line that we've done. And then I'm going to take this bluish grey, the 724, and I'm going to about one quarter of the way in, start on top of that again with this Now, let's come in with just the normal black and I just want you to fill in any gaps where you can see a little bit of the paper, the orange poking through. I just want to get rid of that and then we're going to go back over with the Payne's Grey. Um, I just really want to make sure that it's not really poking through. Okay, that's better. Now I'm going to come back in with Payne's Grey and really lightly... In circular motions I'm doing this because it's it the reason why is because my I keep changing my pressure because one minute it's like really bright and then it's not it's a very weird soft looking um, feather so we're gonna do like a bit more pressure less pressure a bit more pressure less pressure like very sporadically on this area that we're working on I hope that makes sense so I'm like Sometimes I'm hardly touching the paper at all. I'm never, let me just say, I'm never applying hard pressure. But sometimes I'm like almost like I'm doing this motion, but I'm not even touching the paper. And then I, I let the pencil make contact with the paper. And then I just work my way around. And then if you need... Take a blending stump and just really, really gently, same principle, like circular motions. Sometimes I touch the paper, sometimes I don't. I'm just trying to blend that Payne's Grey in a little bit better. And then if you want to, we can come in with this 430, the bright blue, and over the top of some of these areas, just redefine that. What I want you to basically think about is that this is the area where the, the light is catching his very glossy feathers and how you can best replicate that. I might even take an even brighter blue. Let's go in with something like the Cobalt, Cobalt Blue and... 
just pop in a bit of highlight. I'm definitely going to need to use a blending stump because this is... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, 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 um, oh my gosh, I've lost for words. Who would have thought? Um, it is, I don't know, it's just not blending in, essentially. I need to, it looks out of place. So I'm just going over, and when I'm going over with this colour, as I'm building the highlight, I'm not covering the whole area I've just done. I pick points of, so say I did like a circle, and I filled that circle in, with the next colour, I'd maybe only do like, I'd come in from the border of that circle a few millimetres and I'd only fill in the centre. That's the same principle when I'm adding the highlights because I want the darker edges and then the lighter sections. So now I'm going to come back in with my blending stump and just really lightly blend that out. So I'm just kind of touching the top of that pigment and then dragging Again, you'll notice that my fingers are all the way at the back so that I cannot apply a lot of pressure. Now let's come in with our blackest black. I'm going to start to go along this bottom area where it meets the white fur. So I'm going kind of working around the blue that we've just added. Really lightly, I don't want to go too far up and too heavy in this section, so just very, very light. And then there's a little bit of a black bit through here. Just touch up where you need. And then I'm going to come back down with my blackest black in this lower portion because we definitely didn't do that. I'm going to take a nice dirty blending stamp, make sure there's no light pigment on it, and I'm just going to blend in that very, very, very dark black. It's quite interesting. I picked this image because I was like, oh, so simple, so easy. Be a really easy follow along. I'm like, it's just actually turning out to be fairly complex, more so than I sort of had anticipated. Um, let's go. I want to sort of border this wing a little bit. Um, again, on that, on that idea that I don't want, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Before we do that, I'm going to grab my greyish black and I'm just going to mm, redefine the edge of this background. Um, and then I might take a little one and some grey. So we've got the raw umber tint and I'm just going to go over the top and try and blend that edge in a little bit with this grey. Sorry, I'm constantly blowing away pastel dust. Again, it's, it's just a habit that I have. take that grey and I'm just going to work it up up a little bit again I'm just working in circular motions I apply a little bit of pigment and then I I essentially try and like buff it out almost like you're polishing something right like you you put the pigment on and then you just keep doing circles until you've got that um, product dispersed evenly everywhere.
We might go in with a little bit of this tealy colour. So it was the turquoise shade. And I'm going to apply that on the side. And then again, like gently working in circular motions. I'm going to work my way up. And then a little bit to the side. About mid wing, again, it starts to transition into like rock or light pigment. Just add some more. And then if you need, just come in with your grey. Oh, I'm muddying up my pan. And just go over the top. when I'm not careful. I don't pay attention. I make a mess. You probably can't see it on the camera, so that's all right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come in a little bit with the um, Payne's Grey Pan Pastel again on this lower corner just because it's quite um, dark just in here. So I'm just adding that in. Again, same same principles, just gentle, light, buffing motion. And then I can come in with my <clears throat> raw umber tint. And just on the border of the wing, it's much lighter. It's almost like there's a, um, what do you call it? Kind of like a beam of light coming through there. So I'm just going to start to pop that in. I quite like these little things there. It's good. It's kind of easy to have some precision. And it's coming up and along here. Just buffing away. If you haven't noticed, I, I, I very much struggle to not feel silence. Um, I, I'll either won't stop talking or I won't talk at all. Um, <laughs> there's no in between. Okay. So we've kind of got our base a little bit for the side and I'm not going to come down here because I will, um, my hand will smudge it. Um, I am actually going to take, ugh, I'm just reaching into a drawer. Excuse that noise. I'm actually going to take just a regular eraser and just try and where I've been smearing that black. I'm just going to try and um, lightly, I'm not really applying much pressure at all, uh, erase some of that black. The reason I've just chosen to do that with a big eraser and not my electric one is just because it was a very large space and I would be there for ages. So I just thought I will go in with a big eraser, but you can see all the marks. Lucky we're doing a background. Okay. I, I am trying to work out if I want to keep on with the chest. Or if I kind of want to work down here with the feet and then work back up. It's a difficult choice. Alright, I've decided I think I might work a little bit more on the chest. So I'm going to come back in with the 704, so the warm grey. And I'm going to just start to apply that. Again, in circular motions, I'm just laying my base. I'm not going too far down because you can actually see here 
this portion and this portion, we have some reflective orange. So the light is bouncing his little flippers onto his chest. And then so we can see some like orange tone through that. So I'm just going to, and this darker shaded area is more in the front of the breast. So I'm just going to start to map that in a little bit. And grab a blending stump and just push that pigment in. Give me a base to work on. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit on my reference photo. Okay. I keep changing my mind. <laughs> I might, I might start to work like this way. I've, I've, I've changed my mind, guys. Standard. Also, I think my, I don't know if, you, if this is going to come up on the video, but you can see here, I think my um, lens is a bit dirty, or my lens cap. Something's on my lens cap, and it's, I've, yeah, sorry about that. Carry on. <laughs> okay. Um... Let's do, let's start some of this rock. So I might take the, uh, like a French gray. So it's the light, lightish sort of gray from Caran Dash. And I'm, um, I'm going to just start to, uh, lay my base around here. So again, just working my circular motions, just being mindful not to go over the feet. Uh, there's a bit of shadow there, so I'm going to uh, replicate that in there. You may even decide when you're doing this piece that you don't want to do a background at all. Um, most of my artworks don't have backgrounds. I only chose a background for this one um, because... <laughs> Because I thought in my mind this was going to be a quick drawing with not a lot of work in it. Um, I thought, silly, silly me, thought that I had picked a, a very basic image. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll do a background so that it's not so quick. Uh, I was grossly misinformed. Well, I suppose that's the, that's what I get <laughs> Um, okay, so I can see within that stone, so within the stone that's here, there's a lot of like blues, almost greeny yellow colours, so I might grab out, um, I might, probably could use a lot of the stuff that we've already got, um, so we definitely want something like the greyish black and my Payne's grey. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start to do some dots and dashes. Again, I don't want to be uniform, like I'm not doing like dot, dot, dot. Like I'm just, I'm trying to be a bit sporadic about it because the, the markings on the stone and not uniform whatsoever. So I don't want to make it look fake. I want to try my best to kind of blend them in. I might grab a bit of this. Oh, no, not that one. I want ugh, this like blue pink 724 by Stabilo. And in between some of those darker marks, I'm going to start to add them in. As I get up towards the top, I'm a lot lighter um, and, and more sparse because we, this is like the part of the stone or the granite, I don't know what it is, um, that is not, um, yeah, not really, not really covered. I'm just borderlining the stone really lightly with this blue and then I'm going to buff it out. So I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm just going to go really lightly over that edge and blend it in a little bit better. 
and then these markings on the stone I'm kind of just touching touching and then um, while I'm in a stationary spot I'm just pushing like a millimeter so I don't want to drag that pigment everywhere but I'm just gonna start to sort of touch and push back and forth and this is something this sort of thing unfortunately again is one of those things that takes a lot of layers and like building to get it to look semi reasonable <laughs> and not so crazy um, there is definitely a bit of yellow so we'll take this light flesh five and we're just going to start to do some marks in there again just cross checking my reference photo back and forth making sure that it is roughly on the right track in comparison to what I'm drawing and again you know if you want to you can sit there and draw every mark exactly the same I however am not doing that I do not have the time for that sort of nonsense um I might take my warm grey and pop a bit of that in there it's always a bit of experimenting I think with this sort of stuff And then maybe even um, a little bit of this 280, so the orangey colour. Just very, 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 very um, sparingly. I'm just applying a few little sections of this browny orange colour because I can see that within the rock. And then I can take a blending stump and just... Again, touch and drag really lightly. And now I'm just going to keep working back and forth with my highlights. I think we need to add some darker tones through there. So I might come back in with that Payne's grey. I don't want that. I want the dark grey. Or... I might even put in a little bit of the 181, which is the Faber-Castell. Oh, it appears to not be in my hand. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's in my pencil tin. That's why. So you'll take this little guy, the 181, and start to sort of add in some of these little darker patches I can see within the stone again quite sparingly I'm not I'm not using too many and I, I alter the size so one minute I'm doing a little one and then I do a big dot come back in with that blending stump and just blend it out just tapping So we're kind of getting a little bit of a, as a, of a stony look going on there. And we can see that there's a bit of a crack through the, through the uh, rock just down here. So I'm going to start to kind of map that in with my pencil because we haven't done that. With this image, I'm not going to come too far down. Just need to adjust. Hang on. All right, we've done a minor adjustment just to um, show you a bit more in the bottom half. So let's go back to our and start with our process again. So we'll take our blackish grey and start to just work through. So you notice as the rock transitions down, it gets more dense and dark. Um, like this, it's much more blue and grey than it is up on this upper ridge. So just remember that as you work through. Again, it's not a huge deal breaker though. Like it's unlikely unless someone's looking at the image directly next to it that they would even know. 
So you can play around with this sort of stuff and make it work for you. So I'm going to go underneath where that crack is now and just start to pop those in. And we might go in with that light grey blue. What did we call this? It's a 724. very unexciting. I tell you before when I said I wasn't sure where I wanted to kind of work on the body I thought I'll pause the video and I'll go and make myself a coffee and I got up and I have a bike in my studio. My bike is on a rack tipped upwards and I was walking out of the room to go make my coffee um, but I was looking at my computer screen trying to work out what I wanted to do with the image and instead I walked smack bang face first nose straight into the tire of my <laughs> bike. I thought that'll serve me right. Working my way around. Take my black and redefine because I've lost my crack about there, I think it was. And I'm going to come in with a bit of that lighter grey because there is definitely some of that within the image. Just always cross checking. <clears throat> Looking over, make sure I'm on the right path. I'm tempted to even just speed up this section. Switch over to my yellow, my light flesh. Just add a few in, not too much. Maybe a little bit of the 280, so that orangey colour. Just pop it in. I probably don't need to do too much of that because the orange paper is almost creating that sense of, um, yeah, of that rock. I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm going to start to just blend this rock in a little bit. And we're probably going to have to go over the top of some of these areas and touch them up and give them more depth and more texture. But we're, again, this is like essentially us laying our base. I think things like this can seem really overwhelming sometimes. Like the thought of trying to replicate um, that the rock is like, yeah, it's, be, it's a pretty overwhelming process when you look at it. Um, but if we, what I like to do is I always like to, in my mind, kind of break down stuff just into color and shape rather than being like, oh my God, there's so much texture in that rock. I just kind of say to myself, okay, so it's like all these colors com combined in just sporadic little circles and squares and rectangles and so that's essentially just what I want to replicate and to try emulate. I'm going to take my grey again just start to pop that in. So all I'm doing is applying little shapes of colour next to each other really. And then using values so I use my, um, I use the depth of, or the, like how 
opaque my color is and then how and then adding values into it so adding areas of darkness and light to create depth and you find with this sort of stuff as well that like you think you you think that you are needing to apply a lot of information but our brains are really really awesome at um filling in the gap so I could sit here and draw everything to be identical. I'm just taking that 181. Um, so I could, yeah, try and replicate this rock identically. I'd probably be here forever. But it's not the focal point of the image for me, right? It's just the background. And so our brain will input that information. Like, it'll look at it and go, oh, okay, it's a rock. Like, <clears throat> I don't need to sit here and make it absolutely perfect. It's even like when you're drawing fur, <clears throat> you, I don't, I try to replicate the fur to a degree, but I, I never really do things exactly as they are in the picture. Like someone's not going to know if there's a curl missing, right? Like they're just not going to know that. So I don't see the point of spending <laughs> all my time putting in each exact thing. Again, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I just want you guys to not get hung up is basically what I'm trying to say. I don't want you to get hung up on the details or not having the exact colours. I get that a lot. People get really stressed with the tutorials. They're like, I don't have all the colours. And I try to explain that you... Well, firstly, you can blend pastels, right? You can blend different colours together to create new colours. Um, you probably just need to have a better understanding of colour mixing and theory... Um, and there's so much information online about those things. And <clears throat> that, just do your best. You can, I, I did a tutorial on my Patreon where we drew curly fur. And I did it in like browns and oranges. And I, at the end, showed that you um, can, using the principles of what I taught... You can create that, even doing purple, right? Like, it's it's understanding the principles of what you're doing. That, and then, and then applying that. It's like the colour is irrelevant to a degree. It's more important to focus on values. Just having a sip of coffee, sorry. I'm just going to take my blackest black and redefine... I'm going along my little crack, but not in all areas, just a couple of little patches I kind of create like it's um, got a bit more sh shadow, I suppose. And then I'm going to just grab my black as black and very sparingly choose a few of these darker marks to kind of run on the border of the darker mark. To sort of say, oh, there's like a divot in the rock, essentially. And if you go too hard, just remember to take that blending stump. And buff it out. Back and forth. So much layering, layering, layering. I'm just back on with my light flesh and I am just adding a few little more like speckles through the stone. Now again, if I was if I wasn't doing a tutorial, I'd probably spend more time on trying to make this a little bit more cohesive. But if we just look at it from afar, like, we get it. It's a rock. <laughs> that's, that's the key. That's the key thing, really. Okay. Now we can start to kind of work on this foot and leg. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to start to work on this guy. Okay. So I'm going to want my reds and my oranges and I'm going to zoom in nice and close. <clears throat> I 
let's go in with our uh, our oh I've dropped a pencil hang on all right we're gonna go in with our black and we're just gonna map in these little toenails I suppose you call them claws just lightly I'm not trying to apply too much pigment at once because these aren't solely black there are there are other colors in there but I'm laying a foundation first so it's a very weird shape okay <clears throat> now I'm going to take my dark carmine color and I'm going to start to map in some of these areas where it's darker so I can see coming up on the edge of this claw and then it kind of comes up on an angle and meets up with this toe and then there's a little triangle here of darker pigment then if we go over the top before it meets the leg there's like a little arch of darker pigment again and then we can kind of come over to this toe and it really lightly comes down follows the top line of that toe and then we come down onto this flipper there and then it kind of comes down in a little triangle and this is this is actually a very good example of how I talk about breaking down my color into shape rather than um, yeah like that's sort of how I draw is I look at shape and color okay so now we're going to take our bright orange, so our 305, and I'm going to start to map in really light. I'm going over that dark carmine we just laid as well. I'm not going to go on the opposite side of that flipper because it's more of a light orange. So I'm going to go in the middle here. I'm going to come across again. I'm going over these darker pigments that I've just put in, but really, really light. I come down on the inner portion of this toe. And I'm just going to do a very gentle base. And we can see it's almost kind of looks like a flower petal, like it's curving and it's got some little striations through it and then we flip over to this side and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to go over that <clears throat> dark color and just keep working around now we can come up here and follow the border and then just get really gentle and light as we get back towards this inner line. Let's grab a clean little blending stump and we're just gonna buff that pigment in. Just be mindful when you're coming up to where your like dark pigments are. Um, we don't want to blend that into this bright orange so we're just gonna go onto them individually and kind of buff them in a little bit. Awesome. Okay, <clears throat> let's take our Carbothello 221 and we're going to work on the opposite side of this little flipper here on the toe. Just start to map that in and then I'm going to, at the bottom half of this, kind of working up on a triangle, we're going to start to apply some of this orange in here. Again, in like strokes I suppose because it's kind of looks a little bit like a petal and I change my direction to more of a downward curve I really want to pay attention to the shape of the foot as I draw and then we can come up here add a bit of orange in these gaps between the darker pigment that we applied and then there's a bit of orange around the toenail here and then in the middle and then right at the bottom of this flipper 
like just on the edge and then a tiny little triangle just towards the toe. Now we're going to grab our red that we've been using on the beak, so the 310, and we're going to start to apply that. So next to the toenail, and then up and over a little bit. And then we can see a little striated line here, so we'll just pop that in. And then it kind of goes on a wiggle up and down here. And then as we get to that toe line again, we can start to add a bit more of that red in and deepen that. <clears throat> And then come up and again really gently just buff over that um, the areas that we've popped that dark carmine or that shadow and blend it in a little bit better so remember the feet aren't too detailed because again there's a lot of depth of field in there so I'm just going over these shadows and then I'm gonna drag this red down into this space just here and next to the toe and then over this little toe here I'm gonna do little circles kind of like bamboo rings I suppose so I'm following the curve of the toe so we curving up and over and we can <clears throat> come in with hmm, we might grab, it's a good colour for that, is that saffron, mm -hmm. it's probably not enough, let's go for, we're going to grab this saffron from Carandash and we're going to create a little highlight in between this shadow and um oh yeah between the shadows and then we're gonna again start to kind of pop in between some of those red lines that we just did some of these little half circles or semi moons uh, we're gonna come along the bottom of this flipper really finely Add it in and then we can add a few little lines through there again a bottom on the bottom come over to this side there's quite a lot of shadow through here so I'm gonna grab like a dark brown probably go for something like mm, might grab something like the dark flesh from Karen Dash and we're just gonna go over that shadow area just lightly kind of run it down next to the toe and then really, really lightly kind of in that area. And then we can take a blending stump and just very gently dull that down. And blend that in with the surrounding pigment. And we might take that same brown um, and just up here where the shadow is at the back of the leg, where the feathers would meet onto it, it will be a bit darker. So we're going to drag that pigment outwards to about halfway. So like maybe one third to halfway. And then we're going to skip and we're just going to border really lightly that top portion again with the, with the mindset that that would be covered by the shadow or by the feathers. So creating a shadow. So I'm just going to buff that out. If you need, just to apply a little bit there. 
and then we're going to come back in with our red and blend that in. Just working back and forth and just making sure it looks normal and then like cohesive and blended. And then if we need to, we can take our dark carmine and like just really, really lightly apply a few little strokes through there. Because um, as we said, it's kind of got like a weird little pattern. I'll take my red and just go over the top of those dark stripes I just did and blend them in a bit. I'm going to come on the outside of this toe and just sort of really lightly border that orangey yellow that we applied. Touch up where you need to. And you can actually see that it's a little bit of a peak here where the toe bone comes up. So I'll implement that. Remember, always just go through and fix anything that you need to. Keep looking at it. Make sure it looks all right. Switch back. So I'm just amping up some of those yellows if I need to. And kind of goes there and then maybe up a little bit. Maybe a tiny bit along the edge. And then a tiny, tiny thin line there. All right, let's start to work on these toes. Might grab, and um, I can see a bit of green. So we might grab um, maybe like a 575 or like a kind of an apple green color. What is on the end of this pencil? Don't know. Like an apple green color. And then so we can see at the top of this claw, there's a little bit of green. So I'm going to do like a half loop. And then the same on this one, a little bit of green. It's probably a bit bright, this green, but that's all right. And then at the bottom of the tip of this claw, there's a little bit of green. And then we are going to take this lighter blue color, the gray, 724. And on the inner portion of this claw, I'm going to add that in. And then the outer portion of this claw, just a little line. And this one just stays black. So let's grab our blackest black. And... Just create like almost like a weird diamond on this toe. It's probably a bit black, but that's all right. And then the inner side of this claw. And then this one, we just go over the top. It's a little mound. And down. Now, if it's too bright like I just did, just take that blending stump and try really gently to go over that black pigment and pull some of it out. I can also see a little band of highlight. So I'll take a light color. I'm just going to use like a flesh yellow and I can see a little band of highlight just there. So I'm going to whack that in and then go across the top of that little toenail as well and then probably a little bit over here and then also taking the same color i'm going to do a little circle and then kind of work it down there clean off the blending stump buff it drag some of that shadow up And then we have a little flipper. Well, the basis of a flipper anyway. 
I may just grab this bright orange, the 305, and just in the middle of this toe, just brighten that up a little bit. So there's a slight highlight. If you really zoom in, you can kind of see it. Yeah, there's a slight highlight in that part of the flipper. I've just grabbed a lighter orange, a 221, to touch that up. Now we can see that there's a really solid white behind between the belly and the foot, the foot. And then we have to fill in his little leg too. So with his leg, we've got our warm brown, a warm gray. You can kind of see a bit of warm gray kind of coming through here. And then over the foot. And then it's very gray just there. And then the rest is kind of white. So we'll just grab a white colour. I've just got my Faber Castell because it was the quickest one to grab onto. Pop that in. Clean off my blending stamp. And drag and blend those pigments in together. Because it's probably a bit a bit bright and coming up and over so I want to be careful not to drag that red pigment into his leg um, I can see it's very bright white here so I'm touching this up oh. again always correcting Layering, correcting, layering, correcting. Now I can take... I'm going to grab, actually, the <clears throat> French Grey 10%. And we're going to go in here. And just borderline those toe where we can see that it is um, very bright. And I'm just going to fill that in. I'm not going to come too far across because I want to do his foot before I put this background in. Alright, we're going to take our dark carmine and I'm going to start to create the shadow that's underneath the foot. So I'm very gently going to border that foot not the whole way so we can see about one third or one quarter actually maybe about a fifth just from about a half centimeter from his toenail to there I want to start creating that shadow and then I can kind of just follow that line along all the way to the next toe I'm just being very gentle and then we're going to slowly, very small circles, create um, like a little moon shape here, like a half circle. And then a very small one on this side. I am then going to take a blending stump and just blend that in. Be careful, very careful around the edge of the foot not to cross into the foot. If you do, just go back through if you need with your pencils and like touch it up if you need to. That's not the end of the world. Um, but we definitely just want to try not cross our shadow because it will make it muddy. Now I'm going to take... Um, like my dark, my slate, my 181. And the same thing, I'm just going to border the inner part of that foot. But I don't really want to cover the whole circle we just did. Maybe like two thirds of it. So I want to bring it down, but not to the edge. Very light. And then I get a bit thinner. And then I jump across to the next half circle. 
same thing, just really light. Take a nice blending stamp and just touch super lightly and blend that in. Now, let's grab, let's grab like the seven to six, I think it is. I think it's the 726, like the coolish grey from uh, <clears throat> Carbothello's. And then we're going to come down and create like a semi circle area with this, but don't come under the toe. And then we're going to do like it's almost like a loop comes up and then a loop there. Really light. And then it very sharply kind of comes up. Well, not sharp, but like it comes up really quick and short. And then it's just a thin, thin, thin line. Like the shadow is almost non-existent there because the flipper is really close to the ground. So I'm going to, again, buff that grey out. If you do go too far out, that's fine. We'll touch it up with a lighter colour. So I'm just... Starting to pop that in, yeah. And we can see that there is actually, so I'm going to take a black now. There's actually a few little bits where we can see like the rock jutting out. So I'm going to start to kind of implement that. I'm going to border the foot really closely with the black and this inner corner. And then buff. Just touch over the top as I get up towards the toe or towards the flipper, I should say. <clears throat> and now we can start to re implement our rock. So I'm going to take my French grey 10% and I'm just starting to pop in my rock patterning again. But I don't want to really go into the shadow, we can go up a little bit. And then blur it out. So there are lighter sections in that part where there's the shadow, but we want to still keep that definition that that's almost like a dark ring underneath his flipper. So the good old boring part again. Lots of shapes and dashes and dots. And then it's really dark if we look, this part of his rock becomes, again, quite light. And then as we work our way down, it gets a bit darker again. And if you want to, go back over little sections of your other rock if you need. If you need to just touch it up a wee bit. Work along. So I've just got some 726 grey and I'm just doing some marks. Do -do -do. Um, we might switch it up for our Payne's Grey 50% and start, no, that's not the one I want. I always confuse them. They look so similar unless you hold them next to each other. I lie. I want the greyish black. It's not till I put the pigment down. I'm like, oh no, that's definitely too light. And same thing, just working our way through. Dots and dashes. We have a little bit of yellow, so we'll take a little bit of light flesh 
and we'll just pop some of that in there. Especially up around these toes, it does tend to do that a bit. Go a bit yellow and then it kind of works its way down in a line here. And then around. You can even pop in a little bit of green if you want. It's probably too bright a green. Got to be careful when I do stuff like that. Um, maybe a bit of this light grey, so the 724 in the in-betweens. Again, creating that base. Yeah, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done the green. Ignore the green. And we can take our blending stamp and start to kind of blend some of this base out and then we'll go over the top of it again. The fun thing, on, not fun, but the nice thing sometimes is when you're doing stuff like this because it's quite monotonous. Um, I don't need to constantly look at my reference photo every three seconds and I can just kind of draw through a bit with my head not rotating. <laughs> so I'm going to take my black and I'm going to redefine this little groove that's kind of um, been lost. And then there's a few little sections where it kind of splits apart and there's a bit of a hole and then it goes up and then we can start to add in a little bit of darker spots with our black if you want just a few they're fairly sparse with our yellow if we need I think it's very easy sometimes to get really hung up on um, being perfect and I'm the same, like I, I definitely do that with my work, like I get frustrated, I want it to just be, I want everything to be done like so well. And you just got to let that go sometimes. I'm actually going to take like a really bright blue, so that's the Cobalt, Cobalt Blue 30% by Karen Dash. And I'm going to add a few little blue spots through this stone, even over in this area that I've already done because I can see quite a lot of blue and although we've used like the Payne's greys and the very blue based greys I still feel like there is a bit more of a blue tone in some of these specks so I'm just gonna pop this in and try and give the illusion or represent that Um, we can take our slate grey, if I can find it. When you when I say can, if I can find it, I hold all my pencils that I'm working with in my hand like this all the time. And as you can see, sometimes it's pretty hard to find stuff. So I may have dropped it because I can't see the bottom. Oh, it's there. And just coming in with our 181. And altering my pressure. So some areas I'm very light and some areas I apply slightly more pressure to apply more pigment and make it look more deep and rich. 
and then if you need take that blending stamp and just blend it out tap it out different ways of blending depend on what you're trying to achieve all right before we move on, I am really, really, really quickly just going to grab my bright orange, so the Fast Orange by Karen Dash, and just go up and touch up this little brain a little bit in the middle. Just want it to blend that out a tiny bit more. It was a bit too scratchy, I suppose, or grainy. Alright, back to the Back to the what we're doing. <laughs> Let's grab our. So actually, when I zoom in and have a look, I'm gonna start to implement some of that brownie grey at the base of this belly. So there is some fairly vibrant orange. I might grab my 305, and I can see around here is where it starts to reflect onto his tummy so um, I'm very lightly n not a huge amount and then I'm gonna start to buff that out in little circles down here here's little reflective feeds let's take a blending stamp push that pigment in It's always really um, confronting to add colour in areas where you're like, this should not be colour in there. Um, we're going to come in with more of a yellow based orange, so a 221 by Cabotello. And same thing, like just start to um, gently apply a little bit of that. So I'm applying and then moving away and applying and moving away. So I do a line and then I miss a gap. I'm not trying to really fill that area in. And then at the top of this red that I've put in, I'm starting to kind of buff that down. And then I bring it lower because it kind of goes up, down, nice and thin. And then it starts to get wider again on this right side of the breast. Now we're going to keep jumping back and forth a little bit while we work on this. So I'm actually going to grab my 230, so my lighter grey, and I'm going to start to work through these feathers in the chest. So I can see here they kind of curl around. Again in that fanning motion because we're following the curves of the body. I'm going to cross over into some of this orange we've just done. And I can see that the strokes get really quite short here. I keep checking over at my reference just to make sure that I'm following the direction of the fur correctly. And even though we're putting white over the top, because I've laid a base that's quite orange, it's still coming through that lighter colour. Just working my way around as the fur comes up it starts to change more down towards like this right hand corner and then curves the body I just need to be careful because I'm need to avoid my hand going where <laughs> all that pigment is on the right Oh, I just can't help myself, honestly. Just sticking my hand in it always. <sighs> so 
So again, I've got my pencil on about a 45 degree angle and that is to create a broader brush stroke so that my fur has more of a soft look to it over doing sharp strokes like that. Like I don't want really thin strokes. I want to have my pencil fairly broad so that as it's touching, see how broad that is versus like this. I want that broad effect because I want to implement like a soft feel. It helps the pencils blend each other into themselves. take a little bit it seems a bit strange but a little bit of a yellow so we're going to take our very light yellow from Carinda or sorry Carbothellos or the Stabilo Carbothellos it's the 105 and I'm going to start to implement some of that through the breast of this fur Just adding our layers as we go. Should pay more attention as it gets down to the bottom of this fur, it kind of starts to really curve because it's coming to the belly and I have been doing very straight lines and I don't want that. I need to curve that. It's really important. That will um, really affect your realism if you don't curve or follow the structure of the body. Um, whether you're doing a face or a leg or whatever, um, that will affect your look of realism. All right, let's take our let's take our burnt carmine, and just along the base of this fluff, I'm gonna f start to. Um, I'm going to start to just really lightly add that in in little circles, not, not dense at all, just gentle. We're going to take our blending stump and just try and buff that in. And I'm buffing up as I work because this has got a really dark shadow to it but I want to build that shadow I don't just want to go in with heavy black or anything like that because it will look weird so now we're going to take a brown so the dark flesh and same thing just kind of run along the base and outline this bust and then start to work up my shadow Yeah, little circles and again my line is not like it's not like a straight line of shadow I'm it's kind of work like this right like it's di got dips and waves ebbs and flows I suppose you call it and then I might take a little bit of my orange we might go in with our bright orange, which is the 305, and just go over the edge again in those circular motions. So I'm trying to blend the two pigments together and, and get rid of that harsh line. And then I can take like my lighter orange and then again start to kind of blend those but I'm using strokes this time and then we're just gonna blend now just be careful not to muddy up your so we want to kind of like drag light into dark but keep cleaning the blending stump as we work along otherwise you get you pick up the dark pigment that you 
just touched and you accidentally drag it into the light, which is what I keep doing right here. <laughs> okay, let's grab our light grey again. So our 230, I'm going to start to fix this up. So I'm gently coming over the top and just crossing that shadow a little bit and starting to add the feathers back in. Again, always using that broad motion. And then here, it kind of has a little bit of lightness as it runs along the inner leg as the shadow, and then it goes dark again. And you can add in a few little sporadic feathers if you want. And we can come in with a bit more yellow. And then bring that yellow up because it transitions into this chest hair. Now I can see right at this peak, it gets almost black. So I'm going to take my slate, my 181, and really carefully just deepen the very edge of that fluff. And we can take and re kind of border our bottom bit here. And then if you want to get super technical, what we can do is take a light colour, because again we have a bit of depth of field happening, we can take like a light grey, 724, and on the outer edge of that um, dark shadow we've just put in, we can kind of really lightly run this along there to give the illusion of so when you look at stuff with depth of, depth of field, if you zoom in, you can kind of see a blurred edge where the colour keeps like blurring out and popping out. So we want to try and emulate that. And then a little bit pokes off here. We actually have a, a tiny bit happening over here in the side of the foot too. So there I go with me bloody finger again. And a little bit right on the edge there. So these are the small details that can help to like look at your photo, go back over it, check it again, fix it up. Like I've even just, I'm going to take my warm grey and even these areas that I've already been playing with, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of this warm grey in and then I'm going to blend a little bit with my finger or a blending stump if you've got one. I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to or this grey, the 724 I think it is, and then in this upper portion I'm just re-darkening just near his wing because that's what I can see in the image. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to circular motions just buff that in. And if you need to just Redefine his little beak. He's getting there. Slowly, slowly getting there. Okay. Back to this chest. I'm going to get our yellow again. And just start working that in. 
kind of remembering to keep the curves going. Something I'm terribly bad at forgetting today. And then we can grab some white and then go through and add in a bit of detail. So we've got some highlighted feathers catching a bit of the light. You don't have to go crazy in this area. You might find a lot of the time less is more. Um, you don't want to have every single feather stroke visible. Alright guys, before we move on again, I'm actually going to come back up with my white and I'm going to add in, I'm just going to try and soften the fluff on his face a little bit. So I'm turning my pencil to like that 45 degree angle and I'm just lightly going over these areas I've already done. I feel like his feathers are too defined and I want to soften them um, relative to his reference photo. So I'm just lightly glazing over the top of the work that I've already done with the white. And then up here, just really gentle. And I'm trying not to go over the dark, like the black on his fur or anything like that. I'm just trying to soften his, um, his feathers a little bit. I felt like they're a bit too coarse. So this is why I always look at my work and constantly keep checking back and forth. These are the things that will make a difference. And if you want to, you can take your blending stump. I'm going to use my finger because we're just doing that now. Um, and I am going to really gently smooth out some of those feathers. I feel like he's a bit softer. We can do that through his crown. Yeah, I feel like that looks a little bit better. He's a bit, he's a bit softer in the feather, in the face now. And we have his little peak of white just here. Is that white? That's not white. No wonder. Like, it doesn't look white. It's a little very vibrant bit of white there that kind of leads up. Run over his face. And then towards the beak. And then as it comes up and over. It's always touching up. Feeling that much more now. Okay, I feel I feel better. I feel better about it. And we can go in and touch up this area too, because again, I talked about the fact that there's actually not a lot of detail through here. So I'm just going in and Getting rid of that detail. Okay, that 
feels a bit better. The little puff man. Okay, I can actually see as well that there's a few little highlighted like semi-circles coming through this orange so I'm gonna try and pop that in with my white okay let's carry on so what we might do now is start to work up here and then come back down so we have we might take our warm gray Again, just start to lay really lightly that base around the edge. And we can take a blending stump and just buff that in. Oh, it's fluff all the time on everything. Now let's go in with our Faber Castell Pit Pastel, the 230, and we're just starting to add that fur definition in a little bit. So being mindful around this where it meets the black. And we can see his little fur starts to angle out this way. And then we go more horizontal and then we really curve around the body just here. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. I'm going to pause. Hang on. I'm not sure if I paused in time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I tried my best. is always the tedious part I suppose just the hundred million strokes that go into an image and you can see we're kind of playing a little bit of like warm warm whites off cool whites I should also let you guys know before anyone asks this weird red thing on my wrist it's a rash from my wearing my watch I don't have some kind of weird infection um, it's unfortunately just a rash contact dermatitis I think it's called So this bottom portion I'm not going to do because we will like work on all that as I said when we get more towards his feet. Um, look we all know me I'll probably change my mind but that's my plan of action for the current time being. And again we get very soft and out of focus around this side of his little wing and shoulder. The lines are working a lot more horizontal. Really need to sharpen this guy so we will uh, get my little trusty swordfish beautiful point I 
Now I need to make sure I try and erase this line here the best I can. I just need to adjust my eraser barrel because it's getting too close to the metal. Oh no, it's stuck. There we go. back in with my 230 and working my way down you can see I'm creating that like a curve to follow his body and then here again like really out of focus so just laying my base <laughs> I'm actually going to come in and do his little black wing as well. So we're going to take our black um, by Stabilo and I'm going to start to lay a base foundation just really lightly across the whole wing and then we'll add our lighter colours on top. Again, a lot of out of focus when we look at this zoomed in. Grab a blending stamp, rub that base color in. Now the reason I'm not too concerned about doing his belly without having that um, background in because they're so similar in color and there is, because it's a depth of field, I'm not worried about blurring the edges. Coming back in with our black can see it's very dark around this outer border so I'm gonna start to bring that down and then jutting off from the arch of this part of the wing it gets quite dark and then we transition to a much lighter shade it actually looks like our warm gray would be perfect for this so that's the um, 704 We're going to do a little like triangle or like a tooth shape coming down. I'm going to skip a little gap and do it again, but a thinner version. And then another little one close to the white. And now we're going to come down to the bottom. And there is like a, almost like the letter E. And then a few little... A little scoop, a little half moon on the edge. Now we can grab our Payne's Grey and follow that up here. A little triangle and then run it on the, whoops, run it on the border of our wing. But pay attention because I've just gone way into the background. And then I'm going to come down and border the edge of that wing. I'm going to come back in with our black, redefine the little tip of his wing with the black, pop in here, go in and just make sure that there's no areas of orange pigment poking in. Now I'm going to take my blackest black by Credit Color. Again, just updating that little tip. I'm going to come up and follow some of these shapes I've already placed and then it's quite black right on this border here now we might take a blending stump and really lightly just go over this light grey and sort of blend it out just a little bit now I'm going to take the edge and blend that And then I might take maybe like my slate gray, my 181. And I'm 
going to kind of run a line a little bit out and but in between that blue only partially because I want to blur that out again and then I'm going to grab like my warm grey and kind of go through a few sections of that so like sort of on the outside and then a little bit on the inside and then again take my blending stump and really lightly just blend that and blur it. Now I can take my light grey 10% and I can start to border the edge of this wing a little bit because we know that there's a very fine light line there and then here as well and then we're just gonna blur that out and I'm gonna use my finger again and just slightly go over that and again just keep kind of blurring out a little bit This definitely needs to be sharpened. <laughs> I think we've done pretty well to not need to sharpen more than I think two pencils in nearly five hours. So that's good. Ugh. The Karen Dash are really hard to fit in the barrel of that swordfish. So I'm just slightly doing some circular motions again, just blending out this area now you'll notice that also like the edge of my photo I've not created like a nice neat border it's you can definitely do that I just I don't know again because I'm doing a tutorial I was like meh mm, whatever awesome we might take a little bit of this dark blue and just buff that in and again using my finger kind of creating like a bokeh look carried away again with me damn hands okay let's come back let's go back to the white first I'm gonna grab my Faber Castell again my two three zero and I'm starting to define the fur a little bit or the feathers more detail applying a little bit more pressure around the body keeping that curve going all right I'm gonna come over and grab my yellow and start to add in a bit more detail with the yellow so it's almost like a brighter color so it kind of gives you a highlight almost sorry I should tell you that's the 103 from Carbothello or Stabilo Carbothello's I'm gonna take our warm gray the 704 you would think I know the names of these by now, but I just don't. <laughs> Some of them I know off by heart, and then others I've used a hundred times and I still can't remember what they're called. So 
So I'm adding in where I would kind of have some shadow through when I'm using the grey. There is a line here where it's very dark. And now we can come in with actual white and start to pop in some highlights. And just blend them out where you need to. If you want to make your feather softer, just angle your pencil to that 45 degrees. Make it as flat as you can. I'm probably rubbing pastel all over my face at the moment. Working my way around. Now I need to touch up this fur here, the black. So I'm going to take my black pencil and I'm going to angle it so it's nice and sharp so I can get a sharp point to get the tiny, 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 tiny little feathers poking past that we see in our reference. And then where I've smeared, I can just go and fix that up. And then I get broader and a bit softer with my pencil strokes on the outer edge because again we talked about the fact that this is like the kind of depth of field where this is becomes starts to be, starts to become a bit blurry. Hello, Puffinies coming together. Okay. Now, we can see in this upper portion of the wing, there's a little bit of blue hue. So I'm going to take this cobalt blue in 30% by Karen Dash, and I'm just going to start to run a few strokes through here and then down to the edge of his bust or his side and I'm going to come back in with my bright white and go over the top again I'm doing this in like quite a broad fashion, like I'm not, I don't want a lot of detail here. So I'm just going through, his little chest is quite highlighted just here, so I'm not too worried about really applying the white fairly heavy. I'm more just wanting to make sure I'm following the direction of the fur, which is quite horizontal and then curves around the body. And I'm going right over all of that blue that I've just applied. And coming down. Now you can take your warm grey, your 704, and just add a few little darker bits where you need. So there is some dark patches up through here, which we will want to implement. So I might even take like my slate my slate grey, my 181, and just kind of map those little bits in. And then same up here, it just kind of lightly transitions. Take a blending stump, clean it off.
and then we can come back in with our white again and just touch up where we need to pop in some extra highlights and then I'm going to come back in with my black and just fix this border I'm going to take my blackest black because I can just see on his little wing it just needs to be a bit more value added just here. So on the border of some of where the white meets I'm just using my blackest black and just making that value a little bit darker. might come down and start to tackle this part and then work our way back across um actually before we mm, yeah I'm gonna leave this blank because my hand I want to be able to get into this foot so I'm gonna come in with my eraser I'm gonna try and really erase out these lines because that orange is probably too light and that will poke through so I, I don't want that okay okay let's take our burnt carmine so I can see right in this inner corner there's a very dark little patch so I'm just gonna map that in I'm gonna come over to the side of this foot and just here that line I can see it it gets quite dark so I'm gonna just gently drag that out I'm darker in the point and then I lighten my pressure as I come out down from this little square we're gonna lightly buff out and down because there's a little bit of shadow and then right here in this curve there's a little bit of shadow and we can see where the edge of the foot is there's a gap where it's brighter orange so I don't want to um, do anything there before we move on we're going to take our black i'm going to mark in these claws so i'm just gonna go in with my, my go in with my black and then just gentle not not super heavy and then the last one Now let's grab our um our mm, we're gonna go in with our orange so our 305 now I can see here as we run along the inner edge of this toe um we don't want to take it too far down but we kind of do a little curve and then fill in this area here with our orange we're gonna come up over this toe now I'm calling them toes because you can see they kind of have little toes in between their webs and that's what I mean when I say toe I'm gonna lightly lightly go in this bottom section with this orange and then up to the side of the toe and then over <clears throat> and then I'm going to come down and very lightly fill in the bottom section like super gentle and then here very gentle so hardly any pigment at all I'm going to take a blending stamp nice and clean and just blend in some of those pigments His foot looks really weird <laughs> okay I'm gonna grab my dark brown my dark flesh and I'm gonna fill in this 
little portion here which is very very shadowed and then I'm going to run a line on the edge of his toe in that colour and then just on the upper portion of this shadow I'm going to add that brown in and maybe very 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 lightly drag some of that out let's grab our bright red so our 310 like the beak color and we are going to start to go over some of these areas especially so like this little triangle here and then his toe I want to come up and over here and come down and then along the bottom edge of this flipper I'm going to come back up I'm going to lightly go over his little toe here and then even maybe just a little bit very gentle now Let's come in with a bright orange, so like a 221. And we want to come up over the top of this toenail and then kind of circle motion up the edge of this shadow. Um, we're going to come down. So like almost like a little bit of a triangle and then I'm going to buff in a few little circles in the middle and then I'm going to keep following up with my highlighted area just under here and I come in off his toe really gently and then I'm going to start to fill in the opposite side of here with some yellow using some strokes and then just blending that into the red. Now let's take like a saffron. That's light flesh, that's not saffron. Saffron. And on the edge of this toe, I'm going to come on the outer edge. Just map that in and then work my way up to create that highlight. I'm also going to come back in with the light flesh 10% and go over the top of that. There. And then on the outer edge of that. Maybe a bit of saffron over the top. Now, let's get our carmine and just re kind of establish some of these shadows so in between and then it's very dark as it comes up and over here and it comes into a little peak and then across and then I want to come into this toe a little bit more and and darken that toe and just under around the border a little bit now we're going to take our blending stump, very lightly just drag. Carmine doesn't like to be, like it doesn't love a blending stump, I'm just saying. It always goes a bit yucky. Let's take our black and deepen this little upper shadow very light like I'm, I'm not applying a huge amount of pressure there and I actually want to grab my red and I'm gonna go over this little part here where it blends in it's just looking a bit weird and then if we need to we can grab like a lighter orange and just border the toe So just remember to use the colours that you have to blend in with each other. If you just apply the pigment really lightly and kind of cross over sections, you will be able to blend with the pencils themselves. 
And then I might grab a bright orange, so like the fast orange, and then start to add in some detail in these little flippers, like right at the bottom border. And then it kind of comes out and around. And then over the top, there's a little bit of a yellowy highlight. So I'm just going to go over the top of that. And then there's a little one poking off here. And then coming up and over. This toe bean. Coming under and then the front here. And then we can border that. Oh, that was probably a bit extreme. I might get my blending stump and just... That was too much. <laughs> it happens though, which is okay. Um, and even here there's a little bit of a scoop up as it goes over near the shadow. If you need to add any other colours in, like I can actually see a little bit of like a purpley pink through here. So I'm just going to take the 642 and it's like the dusty pink and just glaze over the top with this. Very gently. Um... Just lighten, you can see here that it's might go in with the saffron and just touch up the edge of this toe because it's I've, I've probably gone a little bit too yellow, so it's kind of got. A fluorescent -y orange mix with it so I'm also kind of going over the top of it again with that now let's grab it's gonna fix up these claws so let's grab our blending stump and just blend in this black pigment because we did not do that before we're not gonna do it on the inner claw because that is supposed to be black as black what we're gonna do is grab our black is black and just go over this inner claw we're going to edge the top of this claw with this black and then we're going to bring a little triangle down in the shape of the toe only about halfway and then this one same thing just border that top curve and then drag the pigment down a little bit then we're going to grab like a oh I've dropped a pencil let's grab like our slate so our 181 and we're gonna border the toe on the opposite part to what we just did and then I'm gonna grab like Payne's gray 50% and add a little curve up here and then a little bit at the tip on this right one awesome and if you need remember just go in and like touch up any areas where you think you need a little bit of work so I've just taken my orange and I'm just going in and like touching up a couple of these areas Cool. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to grab my um, French grey 10% and I'm going to fill in this the rest of this little gap. So I'll be careful to ensure I border the leg but not come over the top. And I'm going to gently fill that in.
Now I'm going to take my very light grey colour, the 724, and border the edge of the breast with that. Remember there's a lot of um, depth of field, so some blurriness. We're going to come on the edge of the foot, and then we're actually going to do that on the bottom half. And then in between the toenails, we can take our grey again and fix that up. So I re-bordered that, so I kind of kept the grey in the middle. And I'm going to redefine the toenails because I've just made them look a bit yucky. Now we need to add in this darker orange. So let's start with our very fluorescent looking orange. I'm going to follow the bust really lightly. And then we add in the strokes up the edge. We will take our brighter orange, so the 221 or more yellow based orange. And same thing, just gently blend some of those in. We're going to bring that up into the fluff. We can take our burnt carmine and again start to border the edge of this bust with this colour, super light, and then working our way up in circular motions. Just remember that it curves under and then the, the little leg is there. I'm going to take my blending stump and just blend this colour that does not like to be blended. <laughs> I have this issue across even coloured pencil, like the anything that's like a dark burgundy, it doesn't like to be fiddled with. I'm going to come back in with my orange and kind of just try and buff the edge a little bit. Now we'll take our dark flesh and go along the bottom curve. So we're just kind of basically redoing the process we did over here. And as we get out to the edge it's um, very thin, it's more orange, so it's darker in the middle. We'll take our slate grey, wherever we put it. Okay, in the bottom here, in the bottom peak, we just want to deepen this section here. And then let it, leave it as it works out. Now, Let's grab our yellow, so our light yellow, the 105 I believe it is, yes, and we're just going to slowly start to try and blend those colours that we've just applied into the base of the breast up into the chest area. Just following the direction of the fur and I'm just kind of using this as a blender and also to create some feathers. And then when you want to you can grab your white and pop a few highlights in. Ooh, bananas. Now let's just add his little leg in. So I'm going to grab my light grey, French grey 10% and I'm just going to lightly buff in his little leg. And we can actually bring, because his um, 
little shadow here actually comes up fairly high so we can blend those out a bit so just taking my orange and just kind of blending these in with the pigment itself and then in this inner portion it's actually quite blue so I'm taking my 724 and I'm gonna start to add in a bit of bluey gray in there and then I might grab a bit of like might grab this one the 726 and again just add a bit more depth in there and then we might go in with a bit of slate just in the inner inner portion really lightly just pop his little leg in cool 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 all right let's come back in with our white and we're just going to, again, just add in some highlights and then just run along this border. We can put a bit more of this blue-gray in there, the very light blue-gray. Um, and then I may switch over to the light gray, 10%. So just keep blending your colors out. And he scoops, scoops along his foot. It's only part of his foot. I'm going to grab my white pencil and I'm going to border his body with the white to give him that little glow on the outer edge. And then we will switch back to like a grey colour. Okay, let's take our um, raw umber tint and I'm just going to start to pop that in on the side here. Um, so again, just taking my brush and dipping in and then doing circular buffing motions just lightly it's probably a little bit too grey for the background here. We need to go in over the top with some white, but that's all right. We're on the last leg, the last little leg of this portrait. So, just laying my base. He starts to get quite um, like you can see the stone poking out at the top here again. And coming around. So I'm gonna grab my whoop, my white pencil now and start to buff out or apply some of this pigment coming out in patches. So We'll work fairly broad from the edge of the, um, I was going to call him a penguin then, a puffin. 
and then we're just going to do little patches of white which I'll blend in with my hand so just using my finger really lightly circular motions just being careful around near his foot that I'm not gonna smudge um, his foot so again if you don't want to use your finger because like again I, I've said this about 20 500 times I don't normally ever use my finger um, it's just become my thing for the lot for this tutorial basically um, just use yeah like a cotton bud or a blending stump or if you've got the pan pastels use the pan pastel pads to do this uh, you definitely do not have to use your finger at all just find something that works for you probably even just put a tissue over the top of your finger um, some people wear gloves and then use the finger through the glove. I might grab my, um, I might grab my Payne's Grey Pan Pastel and I'm just going to dip the end really lightly and then I'm going to just tap in a few of those spots in the background which we're gonna blend in I'm gonna come back in with my finger it might not work as well the way I've just done this it's okay so I might drag a little bit and then we can keep building our layers so come back in with maybe the white um, and then pick sections to add highlight again like it's, it's if it's as if the rocks are being hit by the Sun that's kind of the principle behind that Want to go over the top of some of these darker areas? That's also fine. Okay, all right. I'm going to zoom out on my reference photo and I'm going to have a look at it as a whole. So I need to start adding the shadow into the base of his feet. So I am actually going to take my burnt carmine and right along the bottom edge of his flipper, I'm going to apply a thin line the whole way along the base. And then on the other side, do the same thing. But this time I'm going to start with like a little semicircle that comes down lower. And then run a fatter line underneath this one. Up to just before his toenail ends. I'm going to come in with my black and I am going to get a nice sharp point and again I'm going to start to border that edge I've just popped in. I have actually kind of skipped a little gap very well not skipped but like really lightly missed and then I make other bits a bit denser and then we're gonna switch over so again this upper corner is quite dark and then get it nice and sharp along and then it gets heavier more black towards the toe 
I'm going to come back in with my black as well and just touch up this side. Add a little bit more black under this toe and then up over here. Fix that edge up with my blender. And then maybe very lightly on this one. Just very, very light. Almost making it grey rather than um, black. Like a dark grey. So I'm going to take my blender and I am going to just really, really, really lightly drag back and forth. And I'm not going all the way up to the flipper line. I'm just lightly working along the edge and just blending that black in with the burnt carmine. And then over to this side, same thing, either little circle motions or I'm going to just do a back and forth right across the edge of the pigments but kind of avoiding that black as it hits the flipper. All right. I'm gonna grab my handful of pencils again. Oops, keep dropping stuff. And I am going to take my light gray in is it called light grey? French grey. French grey in the Caran d'Ache and then I'm going to start to implement some of these rocks. So we can see we've got a little bit of a border here where it hangs over and then it's a lot lighter in the stone in this upper section. way along. I'm actually going to take my black again wherever I put it. Where are you? Oh, this is a nightmare. I actually don't know if I've got it in my hand, but I don't know where I've popped it. Um, just a second. All right, I found it. It was, under, it was underneath a tool next to me so I'm just gonna redefine a couple of these areas with the black there we go that's better um, I'm gonna come under here with my black pencil and very very lightly sketch in where this jagged edges of the rock up and over and then this section of it again it's got a bit of a gap in there where it um, it's cut, like the the rock kind of overhangs and there's a bit of a shadow uh, I'm going to take my grayish black and I'm going to start to pop in some of these little darker marks and then it gets more dense between this crack in here and then as I work down even more so remember we're just doing little shapes, dots, dashes also I apologize if I go off screen um, um, I've tried to set it up so you can see most of the image um, but again because I'm using a 50 mil camera <clears throat> my um, lens can only be so far away um, I can't I can't zoom in and out 
So I have to physically move the, the tripod arm that's holding the camera and then that is, um, that's only so long so I'm a little bit limited in terms of how far away I can get from my image. And it's very dense and dark in this lower portion. So I'm going to go very heavy with my greyish black here. And then it kicks out much wider. Kind of starts to blur out there, so I might take my um, grey from the pan pastels and just start to map that in a little bit. can take our blue, our Payne's grey, sorry, and start to draw in some of the jaggedy rock around his foot at the back. These are going to be nice and blurred out. So I'm going to go in with my finger or a blending stamp and just Smear those out, might come in with a blending stump. Circular motions, just to try and buff out that background a little bit. Being careful around his feet because I don't want to wreck the detail. And I'm going to come back in with maybe a little bit more of a bright blue, so the Cobalt Blue 30. And same, just little patches of it come in with my blending stamp so remember this area is like is very blurred out from the camera out in the distance take our French grey we'll add some lighter patches in there even a bit of yellow so we might take some of this light flesh 5 pop that in there always looks a bit crazy until we take a nice little blender to it and if you want to just blend the edge of that pigment that you just laid down like you don't have to blend the whole thing out Alright, I'm going to take my grey again and I'm going to start to just work in this stone area again. Remember we're laying our base so it doesn't matter if we're not super neat or precise. grab a bit of yellow so this is our light flesh 10% and we're just going to start to run a few spots of that and 
and a lot more sparse in the bottom half because again that's very dark down there. Um, I might take my blending stump and then just start to kind of um, smear in this background a little bit. So we've got our base all sorted. this upper portion I'm gonna just make sure that my blending stumps not really dirty and I'm just going to lightly buff those colors into the pig uh, into the tooth of the paper really careful up and around the feet Let's come back in with our black and start to redefine this crack. And then I'm lightly doing circles and dragging my pigment down to give like a gradient effect. And I don't want to create a straight line, remember, so we're kind of creating jagged areas some bits are a bit fatter than others or thicker have more girth I suppose and then we've got our black here and then it kind of cracks along the bottom and meets in the middle we can take our blending stump just blend the edge the very base of the pigment And let's start the process again. So we're gonna take our gray, our French gray, and then start to add in some more details again. And then right along the black, I can do little tiny patches or lines, not all the way along, not one, just not just one line, but like as if there's a tiny highlight on the crack, if that makes sense. Just working around the little spots. And I might grab my um, light flesh and again just start to pop in a few, not too many, just sparse yellow spots. It's definitely a little bit through here. So I feel like, like the stone's not perfect, but it's definitely enough that it tells our brain, we like our brain knows what that is. All right, I'm gonna grab my 280, so that like orangey brown, and I'm just gonna add in a few spots, not too many. We're going to come back in with our greyish black and start to pop in some sparse ones in this upper area and then get a bit heavier as we work our way down to the lower sides and this right side.
I'm gonna grab my slight gray, so my 181 by Faber Castell, and start to really deepen some of these dark areas. And then just go over a couple of these spots up here. grab my blending stump and just buff out this edge a little bit because I kind of went a bit ham. You can take the color black and then again start to kind of darken this lower portion with some dark spots because the stone gets really gray and dark down in the bottom half. And then you can add a few little sporadic ones up higher. Deepen your grooves if you need to. few spots. I'm just going to keep building away at this until it looks good and right. I might take my blackest black and I'm going to just really deepen those grooves just a tiny bit, not the whole way. Again, just picking small points to do that to. I don't want to add, I want to add depth with values but not go crazy. And it kind of goes up a little bit here. And grab our blending stump and just touch up that edge. I'm going to take my burnt carmine again and I'm just going to re establish some of the shadow under this foot. And then we're going to come back in with our black and just re do that border again. Again, not the whole way, I kind of dip in a little bit, come out, a bit like down here. There's bigger portions of it and then areas that are not really got any pigment. A little bit here. And I think we can just probably add a few more little speckles. And I reckon he would be about done. Add a little bit of this blue. Layering, 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 all the layering. White. Dab it away if you need. I 
reckon we could almost call this guy done. So I'm just adding in a bit more of this cobalt blue in a few patches because again I talked about before how it's kind of very lightly spread throughout this rock. So just add a bit of, make it look a bit more granity, if that makes sense. so cute he's very cute and I might just come up and do a little bit more of the shadow section in here which is supposed to be rock but like is also um, very blurred out so I'll pop that in I'm gonna take a very old soft blending stump and just Reeb off that. Remember, just always cross check your reference and keep touching up as you need to. Like the final things that I would do when I'm creating a portrait like this is once I feel like I think I'm done is I sit back, I zoom all the way out on my reference photo and then I um, re-check, like I look at my work and check it against what I've done and what the reference photo looks like and just see if there's anywhere that I think that I kind of need to fix. Um, or that doesn't look quite right or I need to add a bit more value and depth and that sort of stuff so um, it's always lots of back and forth and just fixing stuff obviously you, you, it's a fine line between overworking an image and doing corrections but I think that's a, such an important step we all missing sometimes I even I don't see stuff until the next day I look at my portrait and I'm like oh that's um that needs to be amended. It's a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is try and zoom out as much as physically possible on this image so you guys can see everything. And then we will just go through and maybe tidy up the background a little bit up the top. Um, but yeah, give me two seconds and I'll adjust this photo. Okay. So yeah, the last thing I'd probably do is I just want to touch up this background a little bit. So I'm actually just going to take my finger and um, ooh, perhaps not do that. We might take a little sponge and um, just fix up some of the background if needed. Just on this edge. Probably needs a bit more darkness around there to be honest. Let's, I need to zoom right out on my reference photo. There we go. Yeah, so we probably need to add a bit of this tealy green. I'm using my pans again. Up in this upper corner. And I'm just gonna use my finger to blend that out, maybe a bit more of the grey, if you want to you could probably put more of this um, Payne's grey kind of on the border maybe a little bit in that upper corner it's um 
it's been quite a fun image. It's been difficult, challenging, I should say, not difficult, challenging. Um, but yeah, good. It's been a good little go. I've never really seen a puffin before I'd looked for these reference photos, so it's not too bad. Night fix just around here, it looks a bit weird. There's actually a couple more things I want to do, so I'm going to grab my white pencil wherever I put it here, and I just want to fix up his chest a little bit. So I'm just going to go in because I noticed that I'd left a lot of grey poking through, and it probably is not quite that grey. So I'm just going through with my white and um, adding in a bit more of those highlights and down into this little area here but I reckon we could almost or we could probably call this little guy done um, he wasn't too long he was good fun to do. Now, I just want to preface again that you, with the colours, all the colours that I've chosen, all the materials that I've got, it's not integral to have them. The key thing to have is just similar colours, and I'll make sure that I list that, um, or at least show you examples like a colour-picked sheet. Uh, of the kind of um, colors that you can use meaning you don't have to have the exact set of pencils because I'm obviously using multiple brands and things like that I don't want people to feel um, put out or off put by all these colors that I'm using I want people to understand that yeah you can kind of make anything um, as long as you have the basis of stuff. So here's the little puffin. I'm gonna call him done and to call him done means I need to sign him and I think I'm gonna sign him in a bright blue. Nope, <laughs> you can't see that. So let's sign him in this paint or this dark grey. So he's all signed, this cute little puff is all done. I could spend hours and hours correcting this, but there's the basis of drawing a pretty simple little puffin. Um, again, remember, you don't have to do the background if you don't want to. You can do whatever you want with the background. Just work with it, have fun with it. And yes, again, if you haven't already, I'd really love your support. So please don't forget to like, share and comment. And um, you can find all my social medias. So it's just all Kimberly Russell Art across all platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, um, YouTube. So I, oh, and Patreon if you want to join that. Um, but yeah, I'd love your support. Uh, you can keep up to date with my work. If you're after a commission, there's a link to my website all in the description box below. But thank you, happy drawing, enjoy, and um, I hope you have learned something, whether you do the whole tutorial or just watch along and try and get some information. I really hope it's been helpful. So thanks very much, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.